Today I'm going to be taking the sample that JPEG Mafia used in his song Beta Male Strategies. I'm going to make my own beat out of it. Alright, first off I'm going to play the sample that JPEG Mafia used in his song Beta Male Strategies and like always, you guys know the rules. Now what JPEG Mafia did was he took these two chops here and he basically looped this over and over again to create the foundation of the beat. And after that he put some pretty unique sounding drums on top. Overall it's a very distinct type of beat which is one of the reasons why JPEG Mafia is one of my favorite artists out right now. But listening to this sample I sort of want to try something a little bit different. You guys can hear all throughout the sample. Basically the entire thing is comprised of either the vocal or these plucked strings. So what JPEG Mafia did in his beat, he sort of made the vocals the cornerstone of the beat. I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to try to use these plucked strings and make a beat out of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to move these chops around and try to isolate as many of those plucked strings as I can. Alright, so you guys can hear what I came up with here. I basically scoured through the entire sample and found as many of those isolated pluck strings as I could. But what's a little bit interesting here is I actually pitch shifted some of these chops. You guys can see some of these chops are pitched way down. And some of them are pitched up. But they still work with each other. And this is one of the advantages of choosing a sample that's just a little bit more minimal and doesn't have as much going on in it. I have a bunch of nice clean plucked samples here that don't have other instruments like drums or bass underneath them. And so when I pitch shift them, I don't have to worry about whether those instruments work with each other as well. So now comes the part where I try to come up with my own arrangement. I might have to adjust some of these pitch shifts, but nonetheless, let's see what I can come up with. Alright, eventually this is the progression that I came up with here. What I want to do is clean up this sample a tiny bit though. So first thing I'm going to do is put some EQ on top. I'm just going to cut out some of the frequencies that I don't need. I'm just going to boost some of the ones that I do need. I want the sample to sound a little bit more grimy and gritty, so I'm going to cut some of the high end here. As well, I plan on adding my own bass into the beat, so I'm going to make some room in the low end here. And since my plan is to take the sample and have it inhabit the mid-range frequencies, I'm going to make a boost to the mid-range. Now I'm going to go ahead and saturate the sample a tiny bit, just so it's a little bit more dense and thick in that mid-range. After that, I added a bunch of creative effects on top just to recolor the sample and change where it sits. You guys can see I used some bit crushing here, so I'm going to add another EQ on top and remove a lot of that high end hissing. I'm also going to try to constrict even more of the low end here. Alright, the sample sounded good to me now. Again, this is how it would have sounded without any effects on top. It's got those pretty harsh low tones you guys could hear, which I don't really want since I plan on adding my own bass into the beat. And the mid-range frequencies that I need the sample to take up aren't all that present right now. And so once I did add all these effects on top, It just sounds a lot better to me, so now I'm going to move on to the bass. I feel like a synth bass would be a great idea for this type of beat just because I have a lot of room in the low end as well as some room in the low mid range as well. As well the progression that I came up with here isn't as if it's all that busy, it's a pretty simple progression overall. And so I won't have to worry as much about overwhelming the beat with a complex bass pattern just because this is so simple. So I'm going to open up complete here. I'm just going to start looking through some of these basses. <laughs> So this bass sounds like it would work really well with a sample. I'm going to try to come up with a bass pattern here. I'm probably just going to follow along with a sample and not do something over complicated here.
You guys can see if I turn on ghost notes here, for the most part, whenever there is a note change in the sample, there's also a note change in the bass. So what I'm gonna do now is add some bass fills at the end of each of the second bars here, just to make the pattern a little bit more interesting. Now I'm gonna work on the bass a tiny bit using my mixing tools. I'm gonna cut some of the high end of the bass just to make sure that there isn't as much overlapping with the sample in terms of the frequency range. And I'm gonna cut some of the low end frequencies as well. And now to give the remaining frequencies a nice healthy boost, I'm gonna add some decapitator on top, which is a saturation distortion tool. So sounding good to me so far. Now let's work on the drums. I think as of right now, this beat's sounding pretty minimal, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but there is just a lot of room for an additional texture to come in and take up a lot of room in the beat. So for that reason, I think a dense, rich drum loop would work great with this type of beat. I think this drum loop sounds pretty good, but what I wanna do is try to rearrange this pattern a bit. I basically just added these additional snares and just because I wanted to make the drum pattern a little bit more dense. I'm also gonna play around with the pitch and the time stretching here just to try to get this to sit a little bit better with the rest of the textures in the beat. And typically with these types of drum loops, you're gonna need to use some mixing tools to make them sound a little bit better. First off, I'm gonna use my stereo shaping tool just to have it a little bit more narrow in the stereo field. A lot of times with these types of drum loops, the more wide it is in the stereo field, the more frail and weak it sounds. So putting it into a more mono stereo field might be a good idea. Next up, some EQ, just to have these drums sounding a little bit more grimy and gritty. I'm gonna cut some of the high end here, as well as some low end, just because I'm probably gonna have to layer my own kick underneath anyways. I'm also gonna boost some of the frequencies to get these drums to be a little bit more punchy. And to help these drums be a little bit more punchy, I'm gonna add some dynamic shaping on top. First, I'm gonna add a transient processor on top and just increase the attack and reduce the release. And after that, I'm gonna add a multiband compressor on top and just use one of the presets that sounds good to me. And now I'm gonna use some tape saturation. This is one of the things that I like to use whenever I wanna recolor my drums. So you guys can hear the difference if I turn off all these effects. Even when I boosted the drums up, it didn't sound punchy at all, but as soon as I add all my effects on top, the drums just sound a lot more present now. And as I mentioned, the one part of the kick that doesn't sound all that great is the low end, so I'm probably gonna have to layer my own kick underneath here. If you have a hard time laying drums underneath your drum loops, I did a video a while back on the five different drum styles that you can use for your beats where I showed you guys a technique that makes this a little bit more easy, so check that video out if that's something that you struggle with. Next up, I'm gonna try to look for more textures to add into my beat. Let's see how this sounds in the beat. So this sounds pretty cool to me. I think this much would be enough to have a verse section, but let's see what else we can do here. One of the things that I like to do oftentimes is just clone the sample and just look through some of the other shops to see what else you can come up with. This sound here sounds pretty good to me. I might use this in a different section of the beat. Maybe you have this play in the second half of the verse section right before the hook. That might be a good idea. Let's see what else we can do with this sample. Musically, these notes here sound pretty good to me and they work with the rest of the sounds in the beat. Probably we'll have to reshape them with some mixing tools though. After I added these mixing tools on top, it made a pretty big difference. It just feels like it fits with the rest of the textures in the beat now. It doesn't sound as intrusive. The big difference here was just this EQ. You guys can see if I turn it off. You guys can see I basically constricted the frequencies like crazy. And I just boosted a bunch of frequencies that I do need the sample to take up. Let's see what else I can add here. I also came up with this other pattern here.
The frequency of this sound though really does conflict with the one that I just came up with prior. So when it comes to arranging, I'll probably have to have these sounds play at separate times in the beat. This bell sounds pretty good to me, so I'm gonna keep this as well. I think a cool idea would be to add a classic sort of West Coast whistle, so let's try that out. That sounds pretty good to me, but I'm probably gonna have to use this for the hook section just because this is probably a little bit too dense for the verse section. Speaking of which, it might be a good time to start arranging now. The method I'm gonna to use to come up with the entire beat here is subtractive arrangement. I did a video a while back on how to use that, so check that out if you have a hard time coming up with an entire structure for your beats. Right, so here's the arrangement that I came up with. I have a 16 bar verse section here, which goes into this bridge that sort of builds up energy towards the hook. And then after the hook, I have another eight bar bridge here. So that's the section that I ended up using those bells that I showed you guys earlier. I also created a bunch of little variation all throughout the beat with the different bass and drum patterns. And that's how I flipped the JPEG Mafia sample for beta male strategies into my own beat here. If you guys have enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments section below. Let me know which producer or sample you'd like to see next. My free drum kit is available in the description box below. Also join the Discord if you're interested in having your beats reviewed live. And I will see you guys next time.